<laughs> semi-acoustic Dan Pratt Street came in town and it was all proper shops and it was I think it was something like 28 quid and I changed it to 8 quid <laughs> <laughs> there was no barcodes or anything like that so Chris there's a guitar down the road it's right up your pay packet <laughs> and um, he came down looked at the price and thought Oh, it must be in a cell, and the uh, time. And then, yeah, I found a, I had a, a uh, an oboe, uh, which uh, I never could not blow for, because the embrasure was just a bit too... <laughs> and so I traded him for a, a Boosie and Hawks at Dingwalls, the new in 70, whatever. And uh, I could play a few notes on it, and it was held together by elastic bands and a bit of, a few fat bucks on the court, whatever. <coughs> And lo and behold, a saxophone come available. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know the Fender, do you know the Hampstead Grove? I don't know if you know, it's just up from Warren Street. It was the Fender Sound House. And this is a true story. Can I? Is it right? Yeah, that's why we're here. And uh, I think, uh, where's, where's uh, Dennis Pepper? Chilo, where are you? Hands up. There they are, at the back. <laughs> Dennis, I don't know if you was there, Chilo, then, but can you remember what happened? A few friends from the youth club, all the youth club that we used to frequent in the mid 70s. Um, oh, where am I going with this? <laughs> a lot of pals went to the uh, Sundown, which was uh, obviously a centre point, called the Pink Pounder or whatever later, in later years. <laughs> anyway, they've all walked up the road, they've stopped outside the shop from the Sundown. I don't know if you remember those Venetian windows in the mid 70s, you know, the salesman would come round and go, you know, by these windows, they were like little slivers of glass, which you'd, you'd move like that. You know, Powers took these out, and one of them's jumped through the window, and he's got out a guitar, and then he's got out a twin neck guitar. I mean, how'd you do that? Out of the <laughs> and um, the fellas that were outside took them around the corner. And then they've noticed in the background two busies, the old tits on the end. And uh, they've gone, Pete, Pete Kennedy, God bless, God bless his soul. He was in the shop window with a saxophone, and these police are walking up. So I say, that's the shop window there. The two lads are mucking about, so the police walking by. <laughs> and in the shop window, I do not know if this is a true story. But Pete Kennedy can't go anywhere because he's blocked off. It's lit up like a Christmas tree. So he's just stood. <laughs> <laughs> Never let the truth get in the way of all. <laughs> I landed up by that. would become your saxophone then? Was that, it? yeah. I, it was sold to us for £100, which my wife paid for, which I still owe her for. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think I must have left the, the note off or something. So they wanted the extra at 900 quid and it went, sold a scene. <laughs> and then went to Luton and uh, played a lot of records. And anyway, yeah. You just taught was, yourself, you just sat there. And... Yeah, I went along to one lesson which you saw in the film and that didn't last long. And uh, yeah, I did self, self talk to a lot of the uh, coasters, R&B, American R&B, I really. But, yeah. And Jeff, so. It, it's a bit. It's a bit like the ultimate homemade, yeah, kind of storytelling movie, the documentary in a way. Isn't it? And, um, but you, you have a history of madness and with Lee, don't you? Can, can you tell yeah, us a little bit? I was a cameraman like on on Baggy Trousers and uh, House of Fun, so uh, I knew back then uh, interesting people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and also, I lived in Northwest Five. Um, I would bump into Chrissy Boy and. and Lee, and got to know them, particularly when they, when they had crunch and uh, that era. Yeah. So uh, they used to get me along and say, could I make their crunch videos for them? Yeah. Not very much money. <laughs> no, you was, you was cheap and cheerful, and Chris Boy loves a cheap and cheerful director. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then, um, I suppose, more recently, I, I did a bit of the banner on and then, uh, was with Lee on that, and I heard on the radio of a, a, a woman artist who'd been doing a similar project where she'd been taking interviews and getting and playing all the characters herself. Right. And I thought that sounds good. And I checked with Lee, and he said he was up for it. So I got Debbie and Tracy initially. Um, 
and uh, Lee, as you saw, uh, did a, a fine job. Yeah, of playing exactly. <laughs> it must have taken, must have taken <laughs> quite a long time. Complete eh? with a bugger grip. Yeah, yeah, yeah it took a uh, two, two and a half, three years. Really? But, you know, nice and casual. No one cracking the whip and kicking it up in. You know. And uh, it, it, it was an enjoyable, much, a very much enjoyable experience. Just no pressure. You know, no. Uh, I've been most of it shot in my front room in the kitchen. Really? <laughs> he he makes prepared. the best cappuccinos <laughs> this <laughs> song. <laughs> yeah. I thought it. Anyway. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, and the uh, wife was very tolerant, by the way. <laughs> Here's the fifties. <laughs> Centre stage. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with us. The audience here were laughing all the way through it. And it, it clearly works. That's um, me. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the thing that struck me when I watched it when it was first sent to me is. Um, it's very much got the soul of madness in it. I mean, it's it's fun. There isn't much there are there isn't much music these days which has humour or a sense of fun within it, and that's something I've always loved about madness. The, the, the fact that it's, it's just a laugh. Yeah, well, it should be. Should have. Yeah, the film has that as well, right? It, it feels like even though you're dealing with eventually when it gets there some quite um, yeah some quite serious stuff, and there's an emotional depth to it, but it always retains a sense of Sort of having a laugh, and a yeah, bit yeah. Of fun. yeah. And was that very deliberate from the start? Did you? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. For me, yeah, for sure. I love uh, comedy. I, I get, a, well, I better not get rude here, but I get very aroused. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, laughter. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, uh, also, Stubbs, Stubbs like the early videos, uh, what was always fantastic about Badness is they came in, they all had ideas, and, and somebody, uh, and Dave was very good at harnessing those ideas and, and, and getting them to work together. And they work out the things on the side and begin to push it off, you know, uh, always adding things. And they do that musically as well. I mean, the music is very complex. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, and, and covers quite a wide range of uh, uh, idioms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a fine line between seriousness and what's that cliche? A fine line, uh, uh, anyway. It sucks in it. <laughs> I bet it's up the hole in the wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, between seriousness. Well, I personally, uh, I, I, I like that. Make them smart, you know. Make them like, I like a comical lyric. Trip fed Fred, as you saw, yeah, is, yeah. Uh, is my ideal lyric. But one of my favourite songs that sucks uh, off of the One Step Beyond album is uh, In the Middle of the Night. It's uh, about a liquor thief. It just conjures up. You know, I think of that, that the, the idea came from the film The Anniversary with Bette Midler, where she's got Patrick, the controlling mother. Anyway. Uh, uh, and Nuno de Cairo is a throw, not a throwaway lyric, but it conjures up uh, you being on, on that night. Yeah, but the band do do skate that line between serious and fun because your embarrassment is, is dealing with some quite, <coughs> yeah. quite heavy stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a brilliant song as well. Thank you very much. Paul Weller's fav most favourite, yeah, his favourite single, one of his favourite, which. Uh, Thank you very much, Paul, if you end up there. <laughs> should, we, should we open up to the audience? Who's so, got a question out there? We've got one right at the front to start with. We, we have a microphone, so if you could hang <laughs> it. Have you got one? Yeah, yeah they can't let them know. Who's the to look at? She's out of my mind. Can I ask you any memories of the Tobler Pops, recording that? Any antics you can share? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to know? Where do you want to start? <laughs> any way you like. All right, OK. Uh, I think uh, the thing that uh, Michael Hurl was the producer at the time, which he was for years. And uh, we, we used to have to get there, like, first thing in the morning. We wouldn't leave until last thing at night. I don't know what it was. You know, Cliff Richard of Breezing. Tuesday, and he'd be out within half an hour. What the fuck's that all about? And we're climbing up the wall, and we point this room, the green room, the bit Anyway, uh, come, you, and you weren't allowed outside those uh, uh, the, the periphery, you know, 
sacrilege. And then lo and behold, it, in the bar, they brought on uh, a wonderful fowl called Young's. Young's Ramrod and Special. It's all the bad be no hangover with that stuff. So uh, we liked our real out. We went upstairs and uh, we've had a few drinks, and one drink's led to another. I can't remember who was up there. So we got a drink with status quo or slay. And all, I can't remember now. Anyway, is it there? And we're meant to be downstairs uh, on the floor for this yet another rehearsal. And um, <clears throat> we've eventually got down there and we're running about like blue ass flies and there's all this spaghetti of wires everywhere and we're hopscotching in and out of them. And we've got 10 seconds to be in place on that spot, on that square. And we're like, I'm paying 10 for my next step, seems like a three, two, one. And we're there and we're ready for the song. We're ready to perform the song. But nothing's happening, and all of a sudden, from his ivory tower, Mr. Michael Hill comes down and says, You are not only making a fool of the BBT, you are making fools of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and he banged us. <laughs> and that's it, you'll never perform on here again. We really? all right, because we show, the, show the video. Yeah. Uh, but of course, um, we, were, we did get on there again. Oh, there's another one, though, there's another one. <laughs> Let's maybe uh, hold give, give some answers. Just quickly, <laughs> hold up. <laughs> Shall I save it for the book? No! <laughs> we're, in, we're in the lift. We're in a, we've, uh, again, we've got on the ram in front of you. The sun, the rain is in the air. We're in this lift, and there's uh, yourself and a couple of the other boys, and one the road crew. And, uh, but we're in there with Pan's people. They've got these big fur coats on. <laughs> well, what they got on underneath? Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. One of us. Weren't me. Up and down the lift. And there's eight of us in this lift so big. And it stops. <laughs> and we have to call the fire brigade. <laughs> and we're like halfway in, halfway out. And uh, we had to climb out of there. But that was a joyful experience. <laughs> Did you come out last? You know. <laughs> so, Unite, man. All right, next question. There's a lady at the back in the middle. The mic is winging its way to you right now. Keep your hand up so that we can. There you go. Go on, kill. Pick up. Go on. Somewhere in the film, sorry. <laughs> Somewhere in the film, someone mentioned um, attention. Deficit disorder. Was that you? <laughs> no, it's on the film. Which one? Oh, sorry, here Mario. I am. Mario, hello. Yeah, um, did you know you had it? Do you, have you ever had a formal diagnosis? Oh, definitely. I've just found out recently. It's taken 60 years. But yeah, yeah, there's something. Well, I so, I mean, all, so, you, so you've never taken any medication? Or <laughs> Medication I take for it is uh, hasn't been um, concocted yet. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. Um, what would you? Uh, it looked like you might have been, and you might have ended up with a life of crime. Big up, woman. Sorry, can you hear? Put her right your mouth. Put your teeth in, girl. <laughs> It looked, it looked like uh, what your mother was saying was that you, you were sort of having a brush with the law. Do you think if you hadn't been in the band that you might have done that? And do you think, what do you have advice for parents of kids with attention deficit disorder? You're comfortable, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Dave! Just ask Dave. Question. Right, um, can you repeat that, please? <laughs> Basically, she's, she's asking if, if advice the band for parents, saved you from a life that Advice for parents yeah. that... Uh, that have kids with their children <laughs> have a disorder. I, I really ain't got an answer to that. I mean, just uh, if I'd known me then what I know now, <laughs> I would have been a bit more understanding. It's all just coming about now, isn't it, all this deficit? And, you know, I, I had to sit in a... Ooh, I was sitting in a bin. I got. I brought a magnet into school. Miss Durham 
I'm at Brookfield School. I'm nine years of age. And I brought this magnet in. It was a horseshoe magnet. Anyway. And I put it on the side of a uh, tape recorder that was... Uh, <laughs> what, what are you, why are you laughing? <laughs> you don't do that, do you? Oh, I've got a magnet here. <laughs> and it's erased all the information. <laughs> <laughs> Go and sit in the bin. Uh, anyway, um, I was yeah, I was very disruptive in school, yeah, quite disruptive. Uh, but have I got any advice? Uh, I don't know, just be patient, um, understanding, caring, you know the usual things. But I haven't got, I definitely haven't got an antidote for it. Uh, I mean, it's in your chummy, isn't it? It's a, a chemical thing. Go on, son. We'll go, we'll split <laughs> the back and then we'll come down here. You're right, Nick. Right, um, talking about medication. What's the, what's the, what's the story to... Uh, what's the story to Madness's beer, the love stuff and all that? I mean, it'd be interesting to know. You talk about craft beer and real ale. They all taste good to me. Uh, I miss that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. He's asking about the beer. The beer, madness the Madness beer. beer. What's the backstory to that? How did that happen? Pass me 20 quid and I'll let you know. Um, uh, we, we, we was asked to um, <clears throat> try out some different beers. At gig. We was on a tour three or four years ago and uh, it was put to us, would you like to uh, put your name to a beer? And so many were set, set up in front of us. And it was this one, that one, that one, that one. And I tried every one, I'll tell you what. Uh, most of them are shit. Um, they, they weren't my cup of tea. Uh, love struck, I can handle that. Um, but anyway, yeah, this idea came about, and uh, yeah, several <coughs> beers, uh, if you know, uh, night bowling. And uh, we um, we sell them at various gigs, and uh, they seem to be going down pretty well at Butlins. <laughs> I do remember a time we done a we, we was offered um, advert uh, uh, a few ad. The only way to get into the market in uh, Japan was by um, uh, doing adverts for um, beer or tobacco or this, that, and the other. And uh, several different companies approached us, and uh, we we said no to uh, uh, tobacco and no to alcohol. Uh, we've done a Honda advert for, for cars, the car thing, Honda, Honda, Honda. Um, but we always said no to alcohol and uh, tobacco. But now things have changed. <laughs> 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 but it's, there, there's yeah, some that have gone out the window. I don't know if that answered your question. One, one down here on the aisle. Good shout. So go, he's good, use the mic because we're recording it, tape recording. Um, Lee, which was your favourite character to play in a film? And to Jeff, which was your favourite character to direct in a film? Right. Mike's mum, brilliant. <laughs> she was good, but I think that fellow with the uh, fuzzy thing, uh, Brand, uh, the uh, music yeah, right. musicologist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those facial moves that he does and the hand movements. It was just magic watching it unfold. Uh, quite often we wouldn't spend that long. He doesn't like to hang around for too long, generally. <laughs> After the coffee. Deficit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I tape up the words uh, on top of the camera. Where are you going in that brand, Jack? And we play it back. <laughs> in, in about three or four takes, he'd get it and he'd really nail it. And then he'd add things like that scroll. To you know, throw you over the shoulder or, or little details that he, he would always be finding something that could match the dialogue that I'd heard him. We've got time for a couple more. There's one here and then there's one over there. I think we'll do this one first. You said the uh, Danger Man, that was one of the best albums I ever heard from artists. Do you ever think these are going to do a Danger Man 2? Oh, that's my wife's favourite album, Danger Man. Madness album. <laughs> she's, uh, yeah, she'd like us to do a Danger Man 2 album. 
uh, I do it with my band, the Scar Orchestra, which I've got two albums out at the moment. Check <laughs> 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 so, uh, the Lee Thompson Scar Orchestra. I've got a plug it somewhere. Yeah. No, uh, no um, some of the band do, some of the band don't. We're a very do do democratic band. And um, it's, it's got to be all of us or nothing. Mm. Yeah. And one or two don't want to do that. So at it's the moment, just, we'd rather, you know, rather write original stuff and yeah. try and push the boundaries. Last year, there's a lot of songs that we said, oh, as far as I think. Oh, right. 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 Well, Danger Men songs. Yeah. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, no, there's no plans. Uh, yeah, to do uh, a second management thing. Yeah. There's a question. Oh, yeah, you got the microphone. Hi, Jeff. Uh, I was amazed at how expressive Lee was in his uh, portrayal of all his family and friends and, and all the other characters. Try and spot him. Get your tongue out my buttocks. <laughs> no, that's exactly what I'm, that's exactly what I'd say to you. It was vice versa. Were you surprised? <laughs> Still go. Sorry? Surprised. No, I'm talking to Jeff. Shut the fuck up. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm talking to Jeff. Jeff, were you surprised? <laughs> Wait your turn, Security, Lee. Security, shut this fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> were you surprised? Um, I think I was surprised. One of the early ones we did was, was Dave Robinson. Um, and uh, I, you're not making any sense. You say, uh, <laughs> what, what, what you got? You know, uh, and uh, I said, well, I, I said, give me that shirt. I'll take that shirt. That hat there. I'll take that hat. And he's kind of crazy, Dave. Um, <laughs> out of almost nothing, you know. Um, and the glasses and the pencil behind the ear. There's all these elements of Dave. Yeah. If you remember that Dave, there's a bit of him there. Just I mean, to mime, just yeah. to mime it, just yeah. to get Where the Where is my sync. credit? The correction credit. I don't Dave, hero! Dave, hero! It, it will be on the. We're still running credits. Don't give you no credit. <laughs> <laughs> and that man is, has a deserves a hell of a lot of credit because he he started the whole thing going. Lee, no. Question for Lee. You Lee, Lee. wait. I've got a microphone. Shut the fuck up. Those are master. To be honest, I was here for. Do uh, I believe in magic? Wind. Always. Do you Always. believe in God will win? Always. That's what I was in. Completely. Do you want to see a trick? <laughs> because you've always done all these things, but it's like as if you believe that somebody will interpret them and kind of <laughs> and kind of connect them. You know, you've got all this you got all this universe of your own. Yeah. But it, you know, you have to believe in magic that, that the public will see what you're doing. It's not, I suppose making a movie about yourself is one way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but really, really uh, there's so much thing, you know, there's so many things that you are involved in that